good morning students uh, today we will discuss about the concept of cluster analysis so what do you mean by cluster i uh, you already know about that okay so cluster is nothing but it is a grouping of similar elements okay so we will group the a uh, similar element suppose if you have a fruits a bunch of fruits so in that uh, so you need to uh, a number of different varieties of fruits are available banana mango uh, orange so based on the shape we will group the fruits so that grouping thing we will call it as a cluster okay so today's concept is nothing but a, a cluster analysis okay so then the objective of this today's class is to we need to understand the cluster analysis and their applications what are they what do you mean by cluster analysis and what are the applications of that so then after that we will learn about the types of clusters and how they are represented okay so that is the second part thing we need to discuss in this today's class then how clustering techniques works in practice okay so that is the third step and we will take an example of clustering that is came in clustering that is very very popular and important clustering techniques and what are their applications that one we will discuss then after that up, appreciate the advantages and disadvantages what are the sorry uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of clustering techniques those things we will discuss in this today's class okay so the cluster analysis it is used for automatic identification of natural group of things i already told that this you know suppose if you have a uh, bunch of n you know, varieties of fruits so you need to segregate the fruits based on their shape so banana it will be the length is more you can group you know, we don't know the name of that fruit just based on their the shape we are grouping the items like a mango we will have we need to group one uh, based on their shape we will group then orange so like that based on their shape uh, we are grouping the elements that one we will call it as a clustering that is the cluster analysis is used for automatic identification of natural group of grouping of things so here the ba based on their natural group uh, you know uh, based on their uh, you know natural shape we are grouping the fruits like that okay it is also known as a segmentation technique so this cluster analysis is also called a segmentation technique because we are segregating the elements okay in this technique the data instances are similar to each other okay similar to each other are categorized into one cluster okay so here the the data data instances that are similar so we are grouping into a one cluster okay categorized to one cluster and dissimilar uh, uh, items will be categorized in different clusters so similarity the similarity is there we will group in into a one group of clusters if similarity is different we will go for another cluster okay so in there the data instances are similar that were are nearer okay so are categorized into a one cluster similarly the data instances are very different that is far away from each other they have moved to different clusters okay so we are grouping a banana you know length based on their shape so we are grouping the banana into one cluster okay so and if you have orange and mango so obviously the shapes are different they, that uh, uh, data instances are different then we will move to another clusters okay so that one is the, that is the grouping of clusters that is we will call it as a cluster analysis okay the cluster is an unsupervised learning technique why it is cluster is unsupervised learning we don't know the label okay data labels we don't know so we have a group of fruits are there but we don't know the name of their fruits just we are grouping the elements grouping the fruits based on their shapes okay so we don't know the name of the fruits that is we will call it as an unsupervised learning technique so it means we don't have labeled data okay if we don't know the name of the attributes okay so that is nothing but an unsupervised learning technique the correct number of clusters or the definition of those clusters is not known ahead of time so we don't know how many clusters so here we here we have a bunch of fruits but we you know we don't know how many groups we can make so based on their shapes what are different varieties of shapes based on that we will identify the clusters okay the correct no number of clusters or the definition of those clusters is not known ahead of time okay the clustering technique can also 
can only suggest to the user how many clusters would make sense from the characteristics of the data so the cluster techniques can only it can suggest okay so how many clusters we can make for the user okay so based on the data set but it won't tell so it depends on user okay if we identify three clusters okay fine if it is identifying four clusters okay fine okay just the clustering techniques it will suggest okay the cluster analysis technique will then define many distinct clusters from the analysis of the data with cluster definition for each of those clusters okay this cluster analysis technique will defines many distinct clusters from analysis of the data once the analyze the data so you will know about the thing so how many clusters we can develop for that data set okay so here with cluster definition for each of those clusters okay so when you analyze the data set then you will know about how many clusters you can make for that particular data instance okay so here the what are the applications of clusters the clusters are used you know this cluster analysis is used in almost every field where there is a large variety of transaction okay so usually this one is used you know in every field we can use this is you know one type of you know machine learning technique okay so this one is used for in n number of fields in real world okay so when transaction is more so it can help identify natural grouping of customers products patients and so on okay so it can be help in identifying natural group of customers okay so cluster customers who buys more than 10000 we will make it on the group the customers who swipe the credit card we will make one group the customers who uh, you know spend only cash we make group one customer the customers regularly visiting the uh, retail store we will make one group like that we may group n number of natural clusters for the customer like that fashion patients products for everything we will do that one. okay so one application is this market segmentation okay so here categorizing the customers according to their similarities for instance by their common wants needs and prosperity to pay and can help with with the targeted marketing so it means so we will group the i already told that the customers who buy the um, through online we will make a one uh, one group the customers who pay uh, through he will visit a retail store and he will pay through credit card so we will make one group the customers who buy you know uh, says, uh, you know more than 10000 we will make one group so based on the transaction we will make group based on their interest okay so they are uh, taking only regular uh, items so a uh, day to day items so we will make on group so like that we make group uh, n number of clusters when you categorize that so based on that the customers who buy by suppose for example credit card and debit card then we need more swiping machine so then we will allocate uh, we will bring more swiping machine so like that okay so if they are not uh, if they are paying cash only so then we will increase the you know changes uh, you know all those things so like that based on their so, uh, customers interest we will make a, a data analysis and we will based on that we will arrange the things okay so this is from the market segmentation like that we will have product uh, portfolio okay so here in that a uh, people of similar size can be grouped together to make small medium large size of clothing items so we may have uh, uh, n number of clothing items so we may make it as small medium and large sizes of clothing items based on the people of similar size okay so it may be small or medium so when you visit to uh, you know visit to any clothing uh, shop or uh, so usually three varieties large medium and every t-shirts or anything you can buy so we may have three different varieties based on the size okay so then another one is text mining a clustering <coughs> sorry clustering can help organize it clustering can help organize a given collection of text documents according to their content similarities into clusters of related topics okay the cluster can help organize a given collection of text documents according to their content similarities into cluster related topics okay you will have a huge amount of text documents so based on that content similarity we can group the text okay suppose you know for a movie uh, rating or a, a movie feedback so what are the positive opinions negative opinions neutral opinions based on the similarity text we can 
segregated data. So that is also an application of cluster analysis. Okay. So then when you come to definition of clusters, okay. So here we already know the definition. So grouping, of, you know, that is a general definition, grouping of elements, similar elements, you will call it as a clusters. Okay. So clusters, that is a given representation of n object finding k groups based on a measure of similarity see here we have given a n object from that we are finding k groups of k groups of clusters based on the measure of similarity okay such that object within the same group are alike and objects in different groups are not alike that's all okay so here we are suppose if you have a hundred elements are there from that i am making a five groups of clusters in those five groups the cluster within the clusters the objects are uh, similar and between the clusters are object are dissimilar that was they are making a definition okay so given a representation of n object find k groups based on a measure of similarity such that the object within the same groups are alike but object in different groups are not alike. Okay. The cluster can differ in terms of their shape, size and density. So here in some clusters, the density is more. It means more objects are there. Okay. So, but in some clusters, they may vary less. So like that, the shape is also different. One shape is, you know, circular, another in square. We don't know. So based on their distribution of objects, we make it the shape and size. Okay, clusters are patterns and there can be many kinds of patterns. Okay, so you may get n number of patterns when you are applying the clustering technique for the given data sets. Okay, how will clusters can be represent? A cluster can be represented by a central or modal value. Okay, so here clusters can be represent, okay, <coughs> based on the central or a modal value so how we will centroid so here what we are doing when you want to develop one clusters we will first identify the a centroid okay a cluster can be defined as a centroid of the collection of points belonging to it so we make a center then we will which are all uh, nearer to that uh, center of, uh, point we will make an one cluster okay so then we will um, I will discuss that one how we will uh, develop a cluster just the it means when you define a cluster the central the central point is there so nearer to all those central points it will become a, a one cluster okay so centroid is the point of, from where the sum of total square distance from all the points is the minimum that is sum of square distance that is x2 minus x1 all square plus y2 minus y1 all square whole thing will be square root okay so that is that squared <coughs> error distance from the point all the points it should be a minimal okay the cluster can also be represented by the most frequently occurring value in the cluster so which one is having most frequently occurring using that we will be represent that clusters okay so then what are the clustering techniques I, I know that the cluster analysis is a machine learning technique. I already told that it is one of the a machine learning technique. The quality of the clustering results depends on the algorithm, distance functions and applications. The, the, the quality of clusters, it depends on, okay, so what algorithm you are uh, using. So we may have a number of clustering algorithm are there. So came in clustering, you know, uh, okay, when you come to category of clusters, also we have different varieties of clusters. Okay, so it may be grid based, uh, distance based, uh, a number of clustering algorithms. So here, based on clustering algorithm and which distance functions we have, uh, two distance functions are there. Okay, so square root and Euclid distance algorithm. Okay, so using that and Manhattan, uh, uh, Euclid and Manhattan uh, distance algorithm. So using that, uh, which uh, distance algorithm you are using and that application of that uh, cluster. So uh, these three, Criteria based on this, the quality of the clusters will be depend. Okay, the cluster analysis method uses a distance measure to calculate the closeness between the pairs of points. When is, so first, you, what you will do, you will identify a cluster, one central point. So then, which one is the nearer to that one? How we will know? So based on the distance, how we will calculate the distance using two distance algorithms? Okay, as so a distance uh, formulas that is. A one is Euclid distance and Manhattan distance. Okay, so these are the most popular uh, 
uh, you know, algorithm or a functions to calculate the distance between the phase of point. Okay, so here, so usually we will use the Euclid distance. You can use anything, both are same. So, okay, but you, usually we are using Euclid distance. Okay, so uh, we will discuss that one. We will take one a cluster uh, example and we will discuss how we will calculate the distance, all those things. Okay, so then clustering technique. So the key objective of clustering algorithm are the inter-cluster distance is maximum, maximized and intra-cluster distance is minimized. So it means, so two different clusters, distance will be huge and inside the cluster distance is minimized. That's all. Okay. So distance between the two different clusters, you should be high, maximized and within the clusters, you should be minimized. Okay, so there are two uh, top down hierarchical methods that start with creating a given number of best fitting clusters. There are two ways to we can develop a one is top down approach and bottom up approach. Okay, so here there are top down uh, hierarchical methods that are starts with creating a given number of best fitting clusters. Another one, there are also a bottom up method that begin with identifying naturally occurring clusters. So what happens in top down approach? So we will take one central point after that we will uh, which are uh, nearer to that one, we'll make a cluster. That is one thing. Another bottom of uh, clusters based on the data is distributed. Based on that, uh, uh, I know, uh, distribution. So we'll identify the, suppose, you know, 10 uh, elements, uh, objects are nearer to that one. We'll make a natural cluster. That is nothing but a, a bottom up approach. <laughs> okay, so these are the two techniques are there. Okay, the most uh, popular clustering algorithm is the K-mean algorithm. Okay, so this is the K-mean algorithm. This algorithm we are discussing in this uh, chapter. Okay, they have given only this algorithm. So this is the most popular algorithm. That is the K-mean algorithm. This is the top-down approach. Okay, top-down statistical method based on the method of minimizing the least square error distance from the center of the clusters. Okay, so this is this is uh, this algorithm. You know, this is very popular and most uh, important. Okay, clay came in clustering. This is top down approach. So it means we are taking one central point, and after that we are developing a, a clusters based on the distance. Okay, other techniques such as neural networks also used for clustering. Okay, that neural network concepts also we will use in the clustering concept. <coughs> so this is the pseudo code for clustering. Okay, so here, for, uh, what are the different steps we are uh, doing, uh, making a cluster? The first thing is pick an arbitrary number of groups or segments to be created. So how many groups, uh, uh, how many clusters do you want? Okay, so I want three, I want four. So that arbitrary number of groups or segments to be created. So pick that one you need to identify. So then after that, start with some initial random chosen central values for the group. Okay, so so four clusters I want, then you can take four central points. Okay, so then after uh, taking the central uh, central value, so then what do you need to do? Classify the instance closest to the group. So then classify the uh, that the objects closest to the centroid group. Okay, compute the new value of group center. So once you uh, identify that uh, next uh, item, so then calculate the centroid. So suppose if you have a, you know two uh, example two uh, four six is there so then so add those two take average four plus six it will be uh, uh, it will be four plus uh, six will be ten ten divided by two it will be five so then now five will be the center like that compute the new value of the group or center i have done so then repeat the step three and four till group converges so it means so i, I have got a uh, new center right? then uh, take the next uh, element and whichever is the nearer you can group with that center like that you can repeat the till all the elements are uh, completed okay if uh, so repeat the till the group converges otherwise if you are not satisfied with that then go to step one and start from a new and then i want four four no i want three then you can start and then after the same steps you can do then after that if you are satisfied you can stop it okay so this is the pseudo code for clustering algorithm so come to kml algorithm Okay, so K-mean algorithm is most popular clustering algorithm. So usually, if you have a clustering techniques, that is a K-mean clustering is there. Okay, so next one, it iteratively compute the cluster and their centroids. Okay, so what it will do, it will iterate the computes the cluster and their centroids. Same thing. So it will identify the centroid. Then after that, it will calculate the distance between the nearest uh, point and the day, day uh, that centroid. So then identify a new centroid. 
okay so like that okay it is a top down approach to clustering so obviously it was from this uh, beginning one it will i take the one centroid and after that it will develop a, uh, a whole cluster okay starting with a given number of k clusters okay starting with a given number of k clusters say three suppose you want to develop suppose a, a object say a number of 100 objects are there so so you want to classify the clusters k clusters that's why we will call it as a k mean k cluster is nothing but a k is nothing but a number of clusters say we are taking three thus three so if you are selecting three as a k value so then identify three centroids okay three centroids will be created as starting points of the clusters of three clusters okay so three random centroids will be created as a starting point okay as the three clusters okay i have identified the starting point i have you know i want three clusters then i want uh, then i identified three centroids okay so then after that step one what do you need to do so for a data points distance value will be from each of the three centroids okay for take uh, okay three centers you have taken and take now one data point and calculate the distance from each centroid okay so then i have calculated so then after that the data point will be assigned to the cluster with the shortest distance to the centroid three centroids are there so i have taken one data point so then distance will be four six eight so then the centroid one is four centroid distance is uh, six and centroid distance will be eight so then you can group that uh, data point with the nearest centroid okay so okay i have grouped then after that all data points will thus will be assigned to one data point or other okay so that all the data points <coughs> which may be uh, similar to you know if it is nearer to centroid one you can group it if it is nearer to centroid one, you can group it okay so then okay i i, I have to group one um, a first data point with the centroid then after that what you need to the centroid for each clusters will now be recalculated such that it is closest to all the data points allocated to to that to that cluster what you need to do after assigning the data point you need to calculate the new centroid such that it is closest to all the data points allocated to the clusters okay so obviously when you calculate the new center it will uh, and, uh, the other data point is nearer to all other uh, you know grouped data points okay so then after that once again data points are assigned to each uh, to the three centroids closest to it like uh, once again after a grouping of the once again you need to assign the data points to the three centroids closest to once again you need to cal calculate the distance and which are the nearer okay so you need to close to this that center and then new centroids will be computed from the data points in the cluster until finally centroids are stabilized in their location <coughs> okay so once again that uh, you need to new centroid will be calculated from the data points until you finally the central stabilized in their location like that you need to calculate new centroid okay nothing is there so uh, identify the centroid calculate the distance and uh, distance with the data points and calculate the new centroid like that it will be repeated till that center you know cluster will stabilize okay so this is the k mean algorithm we will discuss on the problem on the k mean clustering algorithm okay so the, this is uh, okay and these are the steps we have discussed this this is a pseudo code what we have for k mean cluster in the exams they may ask what do you mean we a k mean clustering okay so uh, write pseudo code for that okay so same thing if they ask you write this uh, pseudo code that's all okay so here the algorithm came in so what do you want for that number k, k is nothing but a number of clusters d is nothing but a data points so two things you want one is number of clusters how many number of clusters you want based on the data points okay d is nothing but a list of data points <clears throat> in first steps what do you do choose k number of random data points as initial centroid okay so if you initialize three then that is uh, you know the three k, k value three then it, will, it becomes all three will be a centroid of clusters then what do you need to repeat the two steps okay in the step two repeat the till cluster center stabilizes what do you need to do allocate each data point in d to the nearest k centroid okay so allocate on uh, each data point to the nearest centroid then after that you need to do compute the centroid 
for the clustering using all the data points in okay which are uh, which are uh, suppose if you assign okay, for clustering one data points then calculate the new center like that you need to repeat till cluster is stabilized that's all okay so you need to repeat this <coughs> then how we will set the number of uh, k value so uh, i will uh, you know uh, three or a uh, four six how we will uh, identify the k class number of value the correct choice of value k is often ambiguous okay so we don't know how we can select k value it will be an ambiguous it depends on the shape and scale of the distribution points in the data set and the desired clustering resolution of the user okay it depends on the distribution of the shape and scale of the data points that is one criteria <coughs> okay so that is one thing so then after that beyond the elbow point adding more clusters will not add much incremental value so here this is an i will show you that elbow point so here so when you are uh, when your number of clusters suppose if you are for based on the uh, average uh, cluster is uh, sum of square errors of the uh, data points okay so and here number of clusters so here when the in this graph uh, so here these are all you know gradually increasing so then after that here suddenly it will go rise okay so or it will be it is come down okay after that it will be stabilized okay so this one we will call it as an elbow point for the number of clusters so after this if you are making more clusters there is no use at all okay so here when it this is the three is nothing but a, a, a value of k okay so after that if you are making four five six no user it may have same similarity okay so this we will call it as an elbow point okay to engage the data points data and to understand the cluster is better it is a often better to start with a small number of clusters such as two or three so better you can start with the small number of clusters depending upon the data sets and the application domain so usually start with the small number of clusters and depends on the data sets and the application domain so these two things will be the criteria to select the number of clusters okay so then what are the advantages of k mean algorithm the k mean algorithm is very simple and easy to understand and easy to implement it will be very simple nothing is there okay so identify the k number of clusters take a sign other those the three becomes a, a, a randomly you can select a three centroids then uh, assign the nearest data points and calculate the new centroid once i repeat the steps till the uh, cluster stabilize that's all okay so it is very simple the algorithm is simple and easy to understand and easy to implement also it is also efficient in that the time taken to k uh, cluster came in rises linearly with the number of data points so it will be a linearly rises okay it is very efficient the time taken to clusters means it rises linearly with the number of data points that's why it is very efficient no <coughs> no other clustering algorithm performs better than k mean in general okay so we may have a number of but it uh, it performs better than k mean okay so it is better compared to all other algorithms okay so what are the disadvantage the user need to specify the initial value of k okay so the user identify how many clusters we want so that is one thing the process of finding the clusters may not converge okay the process of finding it may it, it may not converge that is one disadvantage and it is not suitable for discovering cluster shapes that are not hyper uh, ellipse solids are hyper shape so we don't know uh, it's not possible it's not shootable suppose the cluster is in uh, hyper uh, ellipsoids or other things okay so at that time it's not shootable based on the distribution of the data points okay so today we uh, this is the summer of this today's class we have discussed about what do you mean by clusters and what are the applications of cluster analysis how we will represent the clusters what are the different clustering techniques so in that we have discussed the k-mean uh, clustering techniques then after that we have discussed advantages and disadvantages of k-mean clustering